In this project, you're gonna enable users in your VPC to dynamically discover and access a containerized service. You're gonna do so by creating a set of cloud map resources and linking these resources to your ECS service. To build this architecture, you need four steps. Before moving on, please ensure the following prerequisites. Check out the video description if you need assistance with any of these prerequisites. First step. Create service discovery resources. The first AWS cloud map resource you need is a private namespace. A namespace groups discoverable services. A private namespace is only accessible inside your VPC. Therefore, use the AWS CLI to figure out your default VPC ID. Then, create a private namespace. The CLI returns an operation ID. You can use the operation ID to check whether the operation completed successfully. Save the namespace ID, you're gonna use it later. When you create a private namespace, CloudMap also creates a private hosted zone using Amazon Route 53. You can check it by getting detailed information about your namespace. Next, create a Cloud Map service. A Cloud Map service represents the resource type you want to discover. To create a cloud map service, you need to provide a name. Your namespace ID, and further configuration. Save the cloud map service ID. You're gonna use it later. Second step. Create ECS resources. Amazon ECS is the container service where you deploy your containerized application. In this video, we use an HTTP server as our discoverable application. To deploy your HTTP server, first you need to create a cluster. A cluster is a logical entity that you can use to group related services. For instance, in a large application, you may have different containerized services interacting in a cluster. To create a cluster, you must provide it with a name. Second, you need a task definition. A task definition is a document that describes necessary configuration for your running container. Our task definition describes the container image, port configuration, and required hardware resources. In our GitHub repository, you can find the task description we used in this video. Please check out the link for our GitHub repository in the video description. You can use the CLI to register the task definition. You can confirm that the task is properly registered by listing existing task definitions. Then, create a service using your task definition. 
a service manages tasks. In this video, a task represents our running container. The ECS service is also responsible for registering itself with the cloud map service, previously created. In this video, we use AWS Fargate as our capacity provider for running our container. To finally create the ECS service, you'll first need to collect extra information. You need a security group to protect our container. In this video, we use the default security group in our VPC. Therefore, save the security group ID. Then, you need, at least, one subnet to deploy the container into. In this video, we use the first subnet we could find in our default VPC. Save the subnet ID. Next, you need to retrieve the service discovery service ARN. First, identify your namespace ID. Then, list service discovery services for your namespace. Save the service ARN. Now, you can add the information you collect to the ECS service description file. Finally, you can use the description file to create your ECS service. You're gonna find an example of this service description file in our GitHub repository. Third step. Test. In this step, you're gonna play the role of a user, accessing your discoverable service. Start by checking details of your cloud map registered resource. Use the cloud map namespace and service name provided in the first step. You can see that the service is healthy. Therefore, we can access it using an Amazon EC2 instance. In the first step of this video, we created a private namespace. Therefore, this service is only available inside a VPC. To enable an external user to use the discoverable service, First you need to create an Amazon EC2 instance in the same VPC. Then, your user can access the EC2 instance and use the private namespace to access the container on ECS. Before moving on, make sure your security group allows inbound traffic to the ECS service. Create an EC2 instance in the same VPC of your discoverable service. Then, access it using an SSH client. You can ping the discoverable service to check its availability. The URL is composed by the service name and the namespace. Next, you can identify the private IP address. You can also access the ECS container using a text web browser. First, install links. Then, access your container. Last step. Clean up. In this step, you terminate all cloud resources used in this project. Basically, you have two sets of resources. Those related to AWS Cloud Map. And those related to Amazon ECS. 
Also, don't forget to terminate the EC2 instance you created for accessing the container. First, list your current cloud map services. Second, use the Cloud Map Service ID to list registered discoverable resources. Then, deregister your resource. This results in an operation ID. As before, you can use the operation ID to check out whether the operation succeeded. Next, use the cloud map service ID to delete the service. Finally, list existing namespaces and use the namespace ID to delete the namespace. This process may take a while. Thus, check the operation from time to time to make sure the deletion succeeded. Deleting the cloud map namespace also automatically deletes the hosted zone created for your namespace from Amazon Route 53. To terminate ECS resources, start by updating the desired number of running tasks to zero. To do so, provide your ECS cluster and service name. This is a safe procedure to ensure the running tasks will be properly terminated. You can list running tasks to make sure the previous process succeeded. Next, delete the ECS service. Finally, delete the ECS cluster.